It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Why am I feeling good? Because our next task is to complete the Easy Ardoin Achievement Diary. Not only does completing this diary provide us with several benefits, but this task also unlocks a slew of other pieces of content. Look at the full requirements. Look at all these quests we get to do. There won't be quite enough quest points for us to unlock the first reward of May's quest caravan, but the closer we get to that, the better. I'm really jonesing for that 250k. What order do we want to do all this in? Well, one of the tasks requires a fully grown cat, and that takes something like three three hours for a kitten to grow up, so my best bet is to complete Gertrude's cat immediately and let the little furball tag along with me while I train construction. But first, let me show off the fruits of my labor with these beehives. Oh, right, I need insect repellent. Just gonna grab that real quick. Now it's time to show off the fruits of my bee labor. Look at all that XP. <laughs> oh, it's so dumb. Oh my god. Ah, oh, easy scape. SMH my head. All the way from 17 to 33 farming. We'll have 120 in no time. I also want to swing by the Anachronia base camp and allocate some resources. As I said before, I'm pretty sure none of these upgrades are active tasks. I know the tier 3 upgrades are passive tasks, so I assume the tier 1 and tier 2 upgrades don't actually count for anything. I'll be stopping by here every now and then spending resources so I don't cap them, but I might not mention it every single time I do it. Just being transparent, when it becomes relevant for a task, I'll bring it up. Hello, Gertrude. You're not rat catchers this time, right? What? Never mind, there's history. Do you need help finding a cat? Rather than just helping find his mother's cat, this little prick wants to make a quick buck and won't tell us where Fluffs is without being paid. Fluffs is in the lumberyard. So Fluffs won't leave without her kittens, but as soon as she returns to Gertrude, the woman just gives away Fluffs kittens. Not cool, Gertz. Not cool. But thanks. Oh, good kitty. I shall call you, um, scr scr uh, scr scrumples. Yeah, scrumples. Now we need to train construction to level 10. How do we do this? Normally, quests, but not an option. My only option is to make cruddy wooden chairs in my player-owned house. But first, we need a house. All it costs is 1k, what a steal. But we need planks. How do we get those? Well, the simplest option is to cut logs outside the sawmill and turn them into planks. We'd only need around 100 or so. It wouldn't take very long, but here's the problem. That gives woodcutting XP. If this were the only option we had, then we'd be allowed to do it this way. But it's not our only option. We could buy them from Razmire and Morton. We have him unlocked, but banking them would be a pain and it'd be kind of expensive. Fortunately, there are several static spawns scattered throughout the game. A lot are in the wilderness, but there's a lot of other garbage strewn about and tons of aggressive enemies being, well, aggressive. Rather, there's four planks that spawn just outside the Barbarian Outpost. Then we can bank right over here. Let's gather a little over 100 planks, buy some nails from this guy in Remington, and get to making chairs. I do have to point out, and I realized this much later, that I kind of broke the rules here. See, the acquisition priority for Taskmen is the following. Buy from shops, loot from static spawns, scaling, then combat. Or something like that. Basically, if you can get it from a shop, buy from a shop. If you can get it from a static spawn, get it from a static spawn. If you can get it from scaling, get it from scaling. And if you can't get it from many of those methods, then go ahead and do combat. So I should have bought my planks from Razmire, but I didn't realize that was the rule at the time. But now I know. Oopsie daisy. That's 10 construction. Now we can move on to the Tower of Life. So Zaros's whole deal is that he can't create life. Only Elder Gods can create life. What Zaros has done with the Nile, for instance, is an amalgamation of already living things. But I have to ask, what the hell is this? I know it's based on the alchemical homunculus, but how does it fit into RuneScape lore? These humans created life. Why can't Zaros? Quest complete, and it gets us to 26 crafting, 14 construction, and 27 thieving. We need 27 crafting to make an emerald ring for the achievement set, so any bit of XP helps. Monk's friend is up next. Can anyone explain why this ladder is invisible from outside the circle of rocks? What's the explanation here? Are these magic bandits? Are they working for a wizard? Is the blanket enchanted? Is this a reference? I don't understand. Monk's friend sorted, 20 wood cutting as well. Next, we've got the plague quests, beginning with Plague City. Apparently there are some bugs in these quests involving Elena just up and vanishing partway through. I think it's during Biohazard, but I don't think it's the case for everyone. There are workarounds though, hopefully we won't have to worry about it. Have you seen this woman? Have you seen this woman? Have you seen this woman? I am that woman. Eh, doesn't look like you. Oh, she's gone. Biohazard up next. Poison the mourners, pose as a doctor, do only harm, return to Elena, and don't almost teleport with the plague sample. 
What? There's no plague? You mean the king has been lying this whole time? What? King Tyrus is the actual bad guy. Well, with a name like Tyrus, what else could he be but a villain? Surely they're not trying to subvert expectations. I'm sure once we eliminate him, all of Ardoin's problems will cease to exist. Well, the quest requirements out of the way, we can now complete the Ardoin easy achievements in full as soon as we get 27 crafting and make a ring of dueling. I don't need much XP, so I'll just mine and cut a few sapphires. But how am I going to get a gold bar? Remember those magic potions I made while getting 15 herb lore? They can boost me three magic levels, which is just the number of levels I need to cast telekinetic grab, and we'll use it on the gold bar in the basement of the Varrock West Bank. Wait, when did... Oh, did the mining and smithing rework change the bar to an ore? All right, well, that kind of puts a kink in my plans. Probably shouldn't have gotten 27 crafting. Another rule broken. Oops, account ruined. I think I got to consult the Discord for this. Nothing drops bars anymore, and getting 40 smithing seems a bit absurd. There's got to be another option. I guess mummies drop rings of dueling and emerald rings, but that doesn't seem right either. Oh, wow. I'm actually surprised. Somebody had just asked this very same question just hours before I needed help. Apparently killing the dudes in the desert is an option. Okay, we're camping mummies. Oh, the ring! Grab it! Don't die! Don't die! Uh, all right. <laughs> before the desert heat gets me, get uh, te 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 teleport to Castle Wars. Oof, safe. Got some medium rune salvage from that grind. Shame I can't out it yet. That 24k would be super useful right now. Let's get moving on with these achievements. First, sell silk to the silk merchant, then immediately try to steal from his stall. He's cool. He won't mind uh, eventually. Teleport to the essence mine. Travel to Karamja. Try picking this lock. Talk to Larry about penguins. Find a penguin. Spy on a penguin. Then exchange a point for GP. Yes, GP. Right now, the 10k I get for a single point will serve me more than a minuscule amount of experience from a small lamp. Potty with the monks. Use the obelisk that's just east of Port Cazard for some reason. Try to board the fishing trawler boat. Shame Iron Men can't participate. Oh, a damn shame. How sad. Talk to Tyndall Marchant about rusty swords. Yes, his name is Tyndall Marchant. I always thought his name was Tyndall Merchant. I just assumed I, he was some merchant of Tyndall's. Thankfully, we don't need to actually get a rusty sword because that could that could take a while. Peek at Alex Goods. Seek fallen stars. Merkin gnome, create an abomination and mock god, enter the ogre POW camp, witness understandable aggression against a monarchist, keep my cat in its place by threatening to sell it for 100 death runes, repent for mocking god, I'm sure he'll fall for it, inquire about hiring a servant, the demon butler, was once a foot soldier in the house of Thamaron. Remember Thamaron? He's dead now. Grab a bite to eat, buy a vial of water, and finally, enter the castle war's waiting room. Oh. Oh no. I can't bring the hunter lamp with me. God damn it. Gotta waste it. Shame. At least we finished the easy achievements. Let's grab the reward. So the Ardoin Cloak. Not a bad piece of gear this early in the game, but the better reward is the unlimited teleports to the Kandoran Monastery. South of Ardoin is a weird location, and the only way to get there quickly is with this teleport. I guess there's the Fairy Ring, but that's kind of off to the side. Also, we have a 25% chance to spawn an additional Chompy Bird when hunting Chompies. I'm sure that'll come in handy. As for the Lamp, it gives 1000 XP and a skill at or above level 25. I'll use it on Herblore, and that gets us to level 29. Before I mark this task as complete, remember the mystery symbol I didn't understand last episode? Yeah, so that signifies that completing the task unlocks one of the perks listed down below. This was the perk I unlocked after making the boon of flickering energy. Energies can now be gathered if creation and or transmutation of items will benefit your active task. I don't know where this will come in handy, but I'll need to keep it fresh in my mind because I'm sure it will have one super niche use somewhere down the line. Let's get our next task. Claim two armor sets after the death of chivalry. The Templar armor is found in one of the coffins within the Tomb of the Fallen, while the Dulcin armor is rewarded upon defeating Dawn once more after the death of chivalry. Simple enough. Let's do a quest. Oh no, God didn't fall for it. Wait, don't cut your palm, you jackass. Use blood from your peck or forearm or something. See, we've been betrayed and you have a slash in your hand, moron. But Sir Owen transformed into an unliving construct and Saradoman humbled, but not enough to make a difference. We finished the quest and returned to the crypt to rob some graves. First, the Templar armor overrides. Now we have to fight Dawn again by using her skull on her corpse, which implies we decapitated her and removed the flesh from her bones. With her defeat, we get the Captain Dalson cosmetic override, finishing our task. Our next task, register a total of one unique item in the Mauritania section of your Slayer collection log. The options we have right now is Congealed Blood, Dark Mystic Gloves, and a Crawling Hand. Congealed Blood is the most common, so we'll get that first. Oh, that was fast. I tried killing a dozen or so ghouls first, but they were killing me. Feral Vampires seemed like a better option, and, well, they were. Two kills. 
Receive the permanent boost from the Boon of Bright Energy. Requires a divination level of 20 and 300 flickering or bright energies. Back to divination. I'll employ the same strategy as last time. Get the energies I need, then do a cache for enough XP to get to level 20. I love it when it's just me and another person in the cache and we wordlessly take turns being Cress. The unspoken bond between humans. RuneScape truly is a society. Eight levels from a single cache feels good. And I shouldn't get that much more experience beyond level 20, getting the remainder of the energy needed. And that's the boon. Dye the hair of your cat slash kitten purple. Complete the purple cat mini quest. Completion of Swept Away and Gertrude's cat are required. The experience awarded by the end of the quest does not have to be used instantly, but can be saved. I'll definitely be saving it since it gives 10 times your level as experience, so it'll be much more useful in the 30s and 40s. There's probably an optimal level based on the equation of the game's XP curve. It's probably got something to do with local maxima, but the amount of time I'd spend figuring this out would outweigh the time optimization would save. Let's go help a witch. Huh, this is like one of those bar games you'd see on Scam School. I think they call themselves Scam Nation now. I wonder if YouTube didn't like Scam being in the name. I get it. Completing this quest actually gets us to 26 quest points, which means we can claim our first reward from May's quest caravan. There are no limitations to this, fortunately. Let's do the Purple Cat mini quest first, then get our 250k. Oh, you can do Purple Cat. He's pretty key. He's a good boy. We'll unlock the first piece of the Armor of Trials and get our first quest die. Rolling it rewards, 250k. Nice. And a black plate body H2. Good. I hate it when you get a non-fortunate component item. Of course, we can't disassemble it now, but we can hold on to it for a bit. Probably a bit more than a bit. Let's check this task off. Acquire 100% sprite focus five times without losing focus on the time sprite. Easy enough. And we finally get to start training some archaeology. We're about to record the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth. Oh, it's an achievement. I don't have to record them all. Hmm. Ooh, another achievement diary. Complete the easy Faldor achievement diary. I know we already completed a section of an achievement diary in this video, but we already have most of the requirements out of the way for this one. We just need 16 construction, need to find a mine talisman, and finally figure out a way to get a silver bar to make a tiara, or figure out where we can find a tiara. Thankfully, I overcollected planks, Oh yeah, end game, here I come. We can get a free mind talisman from the Berthorpe rune shop. Totally forgot about that. And since I'm quite flush with cash, I'll buy some runes while I'm here as well. The silver bar though, I could get 20 smithing and just smelt the ore. That'd be easy. But like the ring of dueling, there must be some other way for me to get a tiara. It's time to do some research. After much research, I have concluded I cannot get a tiara except by mining silver ore and smelting one myself. So now begins the smithing grind. In a normal world, in a perfect world, I would not be smithing. I'd just do knight sword and get 29 smithing immediately from level 1. Actually, I'd need to get 10 smithing regardless since I'd need to get an iron bar. That's not the point. At least I had the forethought to mine an equal amount of copper and tin last time. I don't think this will get me all the way to 20, but it should get me close. I hope. I'll make an ore box first for obvious reasons, and I'll make a bunch of arrowheads. I think they'll come in handy when I need to train fletching. I'd be making arrow shafts anyway. Level 6 smithing makes this much easier since I can start bronze projects at max heat, allowing me to quickly spam out unfinished arrowhead projects. Then it's time to do some sweet, sweet AFK. -ing. We need another 645 smithing XP, but we can work with iron now. 15 iron bars should do it. That's 20 smithing. Oh, we could finally... Uh, uh, check this out. There's silver right outside the Kandoran Monastery. What a great teleport. And there it is. A tiara. I'm such a pretty princess. There isn't much to talk about with this achievement set. It's pretty simple and unremarkable, so we'll just skip to the end. All right, Frank, give me that useless shield. It has an emote and can restore a quarter of my prayer once a day. Not very exciting, but I will hold on to the XP lamp at least until I need to enter Castle Wars again. I'd prefer to use it on Herblore, but I need level 30 to do that. Help Nen deliver water to Nida. To assist Nen, you must first construct the water filtration system. Well, we need two silver bars for that, so I guess the smithing grind served more than one purpose. I do need to get 20 construction, though. So one of the rules is that we can't participate in any D&Ds that award experience unless that experience is required for our task. So we can build god statues right now, get the construction experience, but we can't pray at them, I don't think. I think we can come back at a later time anyway, assuming the month doesn't tick over before I have the opportunity to. I could build a second statue, but that'd get me to nearly 
21, so I'll finish up the last bit of XP by making more shoddy chairs. Let's make the water filtration system. Now that we have this unlocked, we can come back every now and then and collect the junk it dredges up. Usually it's just garbage like sandstone or low level gems, but sometimes you get Elder God Wars troves and even onyxes. All we have to do is use a bucket of water on it and get the primitive technology achievement and easter egg achievement. Kind of a pointless one, but eh, it's fun. A little bit of world building. Lots of unlocks today. I'm happy with the progress we've made. For those who've been watching Ferris Noise's journey, you may be familiar with the reward from our next task, but we'll see what that is next time. Thanks for watching.